Hey y'all, welcome back to Sarah Grace Cookie Company. Today we are talking more about your cookie business and talking a little bit about how getting orders can sometimes feel like the easy part. I know a lot of the time we talk about how to find orders, how to find people who would benefit from your services, and how to connect with them and kind of put your best foot forward in order to bring those new orders through the door. But what happens once you get those orders? Um, we've talked a little bit about time management before. We've talked a little bit about how you can structure your business in a way that allows you to have more time and more income freedom. But what I want to talk about today is the sustainability of your business, your day-to-day -day tasks that you have in running your home cookie bakery. So what does your day-to-day -day look like as a home cookie baker? I'll tell you about a time when my day-to-day -day was really, really stressful. When I first started decorating cookies, I had just done a bridal show event and I had an influx of orders. I had all these orders that I was taking. My prices were really low, <laughs> so it really wasn't hard to make a sale at all because it was just kind of a no-brainer at the price I was charging. I wasn't making a ton of money on what I was doing either. Um, basically, when I priced out my time, when I finally woke up and realized, okay, I'm not making any money and I'm working myself to death, and i kind of calculated how much I was making per hour. It was like two or three dollars. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so I was really underselling my services. I was overbooking my calendar and committing to way, way, way too many commitments and orders. And I was staying up late every night, usually waking up early in the morning. And it lasted about three to four weeks there before I was like, okay, enough. I cannot do this anymore. And so I tried a couple different things. I tried hiring someone um, and I still felt really stressed, really overwhelmed. And it wasn't, you know, exactly what I wanted. The person I hired was fabulous and wonderful, but it was still really stressful. And I didn't feel like I was running the business that I wanted to run. I didn't feel like I was serving my customers to the best of my ability. And so then I made some changes in my business that made my day-to-day -day look very different. And with young twins at home, it helped me prioritize my time with my family, which was the most important thing to me at that point in time. And still is. Um, no matter what I'm doing in my business, my family, I still feel like I start missing my kids if I have a certain threshold of time where I'm away from them. Um, I just kind of have a, a point of balance that feels good to me. And I can't name an hour count. I can't name a calendar layout that makes that feel right. But there's just a feeling that I get when I've had too much time um, outside of family and home and not enough time, you know, with my family, um, even though I love running my business. So I made some changes that made my day-to-day -day look a lot different and much less stressful and overwhelming. And COVID-19 was part of that. When COVID hit, I had to start reducing the amount of orders I was taking because I was being so careful and cautious about extreme, extreme cleaning. And um, as you know, you we kind of had a lot of events go away and people had to cancel orders. It was a really crazy time, but it helped me make some changes in my business going forward, such as raising my prices a bit. Um, when I raised my prices, it allowed me to have a little bit more free time in my calendar because not every order that comes along is going to be, um, that's not going to be in everyone's budget. And that's okay. Um, you know, that kind of helps you get a little bit more free time without changing your income too, too much. I also reduced the number of orders I would take. I set a limit for myself. And for some, this may feel a little bit difficult because it feels like a cap on how much you can make. But setting a limit around your time allows you to have those normal work-life balance things that we get to have if we would have any other job in the world. Um, starting your own business, starting your baking business should not be um, the worst job in the world. And it was for me at one time. I was working crazy amounts of hours um, 
and not earning much money at all and feeling more stressed than I had been in a long, long time. And that is no better than a nine to five job where you're miserable. Um, when you, you start your baking business, you do not become an employee of 10 new bosses in your customer. You become the boss of your business and you make the rules and the policies that create the life and business that you want. So I want to ask you, is your day-to-day in your business right now sustainable? Are you staying up late every night? Are you running on coffee and fumes and uh, duct tape held together (laughs) energy level? Uh, Because I was. I was there. Um, I was staying up with little twins at the time a lot. Um, You know, I'm blessed with a wonderful husband who stayed up with them and me, but there were nights when they were teething and I would stay up late going between babies and baking and it was just not fun. (laughs) Um, And so when I say something is sustainable, we kind of think about um, the term sustainable with um, eco-friendly stuff. (laughs) I guess we think about sustainable resources and that's what I associate it with anyway. And When I say something is sustainable, it means that you can do it again and again. It can be replenished. And so if you are staying up late every night, your energy resources are not going to be there. You're not going to have energy for the next day to meet the needs of your other responsibilities in your life. And that's not sustainable because you only have so much energy if you don't sleep. You only have so much creativity that you can expand um, at a time. You know, there's kind of a threshold. We feel like it's unlimited when we're there in the chair working on cookies. But I really started to notice the quality of the product I was making suffering when I wasn't setting those limits around my time um, and commitment level because my creativity would start to decrease or I felt like it did anyway. Um, my hands would start to shake because I would put off eating and put off eating till like two o'clock in the day and just survive on coffee. Um, and it was not healthy at all. But if you're using those resources, like time, energy, creativity, and just pushing them to their very highest limits, then that's not sustainable. And you can't scale a business unless it's running in a sustainable way. So you can't create a business where you're depleting all your creativity, time, energy, resources over and over again, week after week. Because in order for this to be a lifelong business endeavor, um, and if you're like me, I wanted my cookie business to be a lifetime thing. I Um, or at least something that I could kind of carry over into. Um, I knew it was going to change and evolve throughout time, but I wanted it to be something long-term. I didn't want to have to quit and go back to a part-time job or quit and go back to a full-time job anytime soon. So you've got to find a way to make your business sustainable so that your business can continue and you can continue serving those customers that I know you love serving so much. So I'm here to share with you that this coming Tuesday, that is June the, had it written down and now I've lost my paper. This coming Tuesday, June the 28th, I'm going to go live in the Cookie Confidence Facebook group. Um, Y'all know that I've been going live there a little bit lately, um, and that seems to be going really well. Y'all have told me that's really helpful for you, so we're going to keep at it. You can join the Cookie Confidence Facebook group in the description below. I'll put the link there. You just have to answer a couple questions like, do you like to decorate cookies or something? And then you're in the group. And I'll be going live there this coming Tuesday, June 28th at 2 p.m. Central, and we're going to be talking about how to avoid baking burnout. So if you're feeling like the system you're using right now, if you're feeling like the business you're in right now is just not sustainable, if you think there's no way I can keep doing this for the next year, then we need to talk about how to prevent baking burnout. (laughs) We need to make sure that you're setting up those proactive systems 
to keep you from burning out. Because let me tell you, I burn out and I burn out hard and fast. It is so easy to burn out in the baking world because there is no shortage of people who want to eat a delicious, beautiful cookie. Let me tell you, <laughs> they're very in demand. And managing how you sell them and when you sell them and all that good stuff is the key to avoiding burnout. Burnout, excuse me. Like I said, we'll be live this coming Tuesday, June 28th at 2 p.m. Central in the Cookie Confidence Facebook group talking about how to avoid baking burnout. You can join us there and I can't wait to see you. Have a great day.